waiting, so I'll come back to Pyre. Let's continue our journey further into the sea. Oh? The Imp Tizo has been much more animated than ever, even than usual. What is it, little one? Uh, Tizo seems to think something very delicious in, is in this world. He keeps on screeching? I don't think I have ever seen him like this. Wait, what is he? Just then, Tizo dives into the waters and vanishes into the depths. Oh, I hope he can swim. He can, but he appears crestfallen when he finally returns, his claws empty. Tizo is very disappointed that whatever he attempted to catch eluded him. He begins to sob uncontrollably, the two revel in each other's misery for a time. Fear and Tizo lost hope for the next fight. You and your companions look upon the deathless tempest, the stars the moment you sail beyond it. Yet the very thought is being risen. Then, something in the nearby water steers, and from it springs something from you. Hold, good ladies and good sirs, this night beseeches you to hear him, if you please. What is it now, worm? The words are ended. We have no further need of you. Oh, but you do, and in turn this night has further need of you, good lady. Out of it, then. Let us be joined! Let us now join you, please! Can you believe this, Hedwin? That way, no. Nay, <laughs> look, you're not so surprised. Your valor in the rites did steal this poor knight's soul. He swears to you, upon his long lost honor, as a would be knight errant of a sea dominion, that he shall serve you to the end. What about your older wing friends back there? The pirate hearts? They are base cowards! This knight can no longer abide such spineless characters, having witnessed true glory in our clash upon the Hulk of Oris. Never before have we been trounced so cruelly. And furthermore, this knight shall aid your passage through the deathless tempest. It is not so that you seek passage to the north? With this knight's aid, you shall achieve your wish. Sir Gilman continues to persuade you for quite some time. He seems to know a way cr to cross the storm. Some sort of long held secret among William's excited supporters. Dario pulls the rest of you aside after having kissed her look. Are you most sure that Sandalwood would want this thing around? Mostly sure Sandalwood wants some of each mask, and this one seems about as good as we're going to get. Dario goes back, goes back at the worm, who tries his best to look presentable. Edwin is more gracious. He tells Sir Gorman that if he promises to help you cross the deathless tempest, then he can come along for now. This night is overjoyed, and he hereby swears to see you pass the storm. No, first, this night requires your consent. Give unto this night, play your blessing in the name of the night wings, and thus shall he go forth. Yes. As you begin to say something in response, Sir Gorman cries out in fire. He vanishes into the depths, yet through this close encounter with him, you cling to some sense of where he is going and what he intends to do. Sir Gilman is determined to help you cross the deathless tempest. Returning to prove himself to you in the night wings, Sir Gilman emerges somewhere in the outer reaches of the Sea of Solis and calls out to you. Master Reader, if you can hear this knight, then he implores you no. Now, lend him your guidance. This knight's objectives of not be far east of here. Today, we shall bring the peace to the environment sea. Know, however, that among this knight's preference, the actions we are about to take are highly forbidden. But they are highly just. Thus, Sir Gilman sets forth to quell the storm that rages to the north. Fuck! Yonder lie the false spawn of unfathomed planners! 
boiling a smooth wrath. Exile two rooms within this wall to songs of harbor these abominations, using them to bar passage through the downside channels for any save this night's own kind. Be gone now from here, fiends! This night shall finish what the Under King always started. Rank no longer, for we no longer saw the Commonwealth last this night, Jake. He, you hold no sway over this night. Huh? And what have you done to this fool? Have you no one left at all? This night has done what that which was required doing. His honor cannot sink much lower, anyhow. He figured this would be an idle time to free himself from servitude to you. You, you dare to start the tempest for those night wings! Good, Sir Deluge. This night was born to dare. Now go and fight this night if you so dare as well. Uh, I have to punish him. This is an order. What now, Sir Deluge? Shall you not face this night yourself and leave the dirt to work until you charge? Fine, Gilliman! You wish to stand against the commander? Then let it your way! Sir Marsh, let the secrets to me! Punish now, you difficulty burning your troublemaker! You are the master of this time, no longer, said Luke. Just shut her off, father and bones. This knight would say it was an honor serving you, said the Luke, and that would be a bold face lie, and yet another strain upon his fucking reputation. And then we meet again. Oh, wait, you lonely traitor! Even this knight will have your help! As the day was on, there was still no sign of the wind night. The companions grew restless, but then... Hail! This night returns with new fun tales to tell, and new scars to show for them! Sir Gilman is sopping wet and visibly shaken, and he struggles to maintain the crew. He is, in short, the very image of wind night. And, more importantly, that little tempers ought no longer pose a threat for them. Behold! As if on cue, the deathless tempest begins to simmer and subside. Would you look at that? You really did it. Of course, the knight did it. Now, if it would be alright with you, this knight could really use some shut eye. The one knight that collapses in exhaustion, you and Helen help him up. A little is a deal, said the man. Welcome to the night wings. So if you man joined the group, he also revealed a tough note for you. Through the first tempest it is. With Sir Gilman's aid, you managed to breach the tempest. You are true to your world, worm. I shall give you that. But now what? You are stranded in the in this cursed storm. A most excellent question, and most one most fair. Tell me that once more, and I shall tie you in a knot. 
and from your most spirited as well. This night was wise to side with you. Just where do we turn from here? Answer the question now. Sir Demon does no such thing, although eventually he does make note of a specific current that should lead you to the lands beyond. If I may, I can corroborate Sir Demon's account. We are close to making landfall. Then let me be the first to say, let's go. You are on the verge of sailing across the Sea of Solace. Um, I say, like. Uh, Hi, Yuki, what is it? That look you're all staring around. You know how to play that game, don't you? Why, I suppose I do. Good. But I was thinking it's a little gloomy here and we could use some token to lighten up the mood. Know what I mean? Hi. Then let me see what I can do. At last you wake the numbers of the solid jagged ground. The land called Black Base and your fellow exiles unpack the wagon so you can take stock of our of how best to reach your destination. Sir Gilman's Crest, official certification of knighthood in the Commonwealth, of sold by the knights. You approach Sir Gilman, who must have just finished practicing his fancy maneuvers. He grants you with his single eye. Hey, old Master Weaver! This night is the time to train a harbor having joined the famous Nightwings. You shall ensure that this trial will really continues to live up to its most feet reputation. This is such a honor, and this night has a great deal of all to gain. Having played the pirate heart, this night fully expects how to conduct the rites in a most honorable fashion, to the fullest letter of the law described within the book. Some triumvirates this night has met, and perchance mentioned by name, they are inclined to bend the rules a bit, sometimes a lot, and to prevail by any means they can. But this is wrong, the exile who refuses to obey the rules as they were written by the under-king Oris and his seven friends deserves neither honor nor his freedom. Thusly, does this knight have confidence that Master Widow shall resist any temptations to conduct the words in any underhanded fashion? Now then, this knight must undergo a whole crazy having trained up in the part of forest. So, Please excuse him, Master Reader. He slithers off, humming some sort of travelers' tune. My lovely reader comes to me again. To what do I owe the pleasure? We have invoked Sandra. So then, we are back on some land or something like it, hmm? Then this must be the Black Basin. Flames and noxious fumes on one side. Suffocating first on the other. Lovely, lovely place. So good of you to take me here. You truly would pursue those blasted stars until the farthest corners of this land, it seems. Though, I had better cease my blasphemy, or as the scribes themselves might just descend from, from up on the high and strike me with another mark to death penalty. The thrill of such transgression, reader. Sometimes it keeps me going, not that I have many other chores. Now, we had best get back to our normal business, as it were. I will for now then be there. You'll find that Hedwin has asked for several volunteers to scout the area and report back. Alright everyone, don't go too far and let's meet back by dusk. Please, use caution. The exiles dwelling in these lands are well, other territorial, territorial 
for your path, but you remain with the black wagon to keep watch. You see occasional black shapes soaring across the sky, but none of them draw near enough for you to see in any detail. Eventually, your companions make their way back, and everyone has allies as Penant or Ergo. Hi everyone, I'm back! I have come back! I returns from the east with little to report, save for word that the glowing Vulcan Vector is very, very hot. This night it lives, although he has little else to report. The newest member of the group, Sildimo, returns from a northern pass, visibly shaken. He appears to have discovered an intense fear of heights. These are wondrous whether any species of fish, species of fish lives in the pools of rock nearby. The little Mptizo seems disappointed to have left the water behind. He remains with you, Mr. the wagon. There is a western pass that seems reversible. If you travel by the light of dawn, the shadows and the cracks may well cover our advance against whoever might be watching. Taking your pardon? I do not wish to contradict your strategy, madam. Though, in my experience, we shall not remain hidden for long during the climb toward the nest of Trieste. The exiles of the high wind remnants, you may have no love for them inherently, but they have no such qualms with me for now. I may be able to negotiate safe passage. <laughs> negotiate with them? Then Hedwin steps in as the lone minstrel bows and backs away. Hey, let's not decide on this just yet. We're not going anywhere right now. That much we can agree on. We'll decide how best to go ahead come morning. For now, let's take the rest of the afternoon and get our bearings. Daria glares at the sky as everyone else disperses. You have the rest of the day to practice your vocations. You and Rocky spent some time reviewing some of the specific aspects of the rites, such as the properties of the aura. You sense that he gained something from it. Now, with all this right business that has been this one, we will find some move that I've been mulling for a while, and I think it is finally got how I could pull it off. I think I can just do this now you on it in the morning, sister. The long Mr. believes he can negotiate safe passage with the harps via this path. Let me take a sip of tea. Show yourself, you frightened little birds! All day long, wind shadows cross the sun, wrapping watched. Dario is very unhappy about it, though the lone minstrel now attempts to calm her. Perhaps I can communicate with them. Please believe me, madam, when I say your enmity towards the hops have best be held in check here. So Dario looks at him with fury in her eyes, yet he retains his calm demeanor. Soon she grants his request with a silent gesture. Then he goes toward the heavens. Good sisters, we are humble travelers such as you, and beg you leave. We join in by the sea and seek safe passage through your lands. We shall not disturb your hunting or your nests. The request is met with nothing but silence. You search in vain for any indication of acknowledgement. Then without notice one of them appears. She swoops the minstrel up and out of sight before Jutari can respond. Damnation! Wait here, I shall go find him. For a long, terrible moment, you are alone with your pain. Soon, however, the long meteor returns. Amid the sound of flapping wings, he dusts his cloak and calls out toward them. We thank you for your hospitality, good sisters. We shall be on our way. Having seen this, Jutari returns solemnly. The exiles of the Highland Remnants are letting it pass. For now, it seems they are having some dispute within their ranks. We wish no further troubles for the time. It, it is a warning, that one, one that leads to die of famine. Die lost hope for the next ride. Right. 
At last you really arrive at the nest of Triesta, where the next ride is soon to commence. You cannot shake the feeling that unseen eyes work your way against Ascent and remain watching now. The hand for more. My Emperor lay there, bleeding and alone, stranded in a bitter land beyond the river. With flitting consciousness he understood he, the folly of his quest and the folly of his rule over his country. Thus did he await the last embrace. It was the imp hope that nursed him back to health and warned him often of the dangers he would have to face. Many enemies of Mur would come in search for him, some under employment by the rope collar, some longing openly for cold and complicated vengeance. I was one of them. I plunged into the river willingly. We needed to be sure that he was dead. Oh, hey you guys, what brings you out here? No, wait, don't tell me, I don't wanna know. All I want is you to get the dancing in the downside. Pleasure was all mine and that, you guys. You and your fellow exiles gather on the blasted lands called the Nest of Triesta, expecting the imminent commencement of the rites. You see no sign of any adversaries, but then you hear a whooshing sound above. This then is what passes through the night wings. No such a rubble. Not even dressed for the occasion yet. It seems the scribes have little pride in tradition. Hold your tongue, little bird, we have not come for talk. No. You have come to on behalf of your common world. Mark well my words, you horned filth. When at last we free ourselves, your home shall burn. With that, the harp swoops off as Jodari glows at her. It is only then that you realize another harp has come. She is quite serious, I assure you. I can help you sort her out. It's in our mutual interest. You know not of my interest. Mm, let's give this another shot. Hi, my name is Pami Fiatei. The shiny one back there was my blood sister. No need to judge her harshly though. We've only met just now, though I must say, something about you reminds me of her. How dare you implicate that I have anything in common with your ilk? Just then, Hedwin shows up to intervene. He whispers something to Jodario. No, Hedwin, you cannot be serious. Jody, I am asking you to trust on me this one. Am I perhaps interrupting something? Say, by the by, however did you make it all this way across the sea? You can see if I am. Trust is something I love to give away, Hedwin. But you have set our course thus far, and I have followed, so do as you must. That Sandalwood had better have an explanation for all this. Jodariel storms off as he returns to you. What's your take on this one, my friend? Our informant wants someone for each mask. I hadn't expected her to run into a harp, yet here she is. What are you getting from her? You turn your attention to Pamitha, who has been watching with the most interest. Uh, are you there, are you? Pleasure to make your acquaintance, darling. Well, here I am. Guess intently all you like and tell from what there is. The truth of it? Why don't you? You sense that she is conflicted about something, so you do not know what. You also sense, however, that her motives here and now are earnest. Edwin wants to know the initial impression of Tamifia. 
The third heroine that you think the group should take is chances with Pamifa and take her at her word. My thought as well, I think and hope to die will come around. He then turns to Pamifa. I'm Hedwin. We'll accept your offer on two conditions. If you hear me out. Conditions? Why sure, I love a good conditional too. First, after we finish here tonight, you come along and make sure that your blood sister and her friends don't give us any trouble when we headed out. Second, you'll have to find a way to get along with Jodayo, whom you met earlier. Brilliant! I have no plans to stick around here anyway. As for you, demon friend, your bath will get in famously. Now I don't suppose you have an extra set of rings I could use, because I think the ride is getting started. Look up and see that she is right. Pamifia Tain joined you. She has scored several. I thought for sure the stars would have eluded you by now. Yet here you are, somehow, upon the nest of Triesta. And you've swelled the ranks of your triumvirate not merely with another, but with two. One from the Pyre Heart, no less. And one who seeks the favor of the adversaries whom you'll imminently face. They are the essence. Winged terrors, as you soon shall see. Can your longing for freedom match their hatred for the vibrant country that was once your home? From a distance, you observe as Panitha, now clad in Nightwing's raiments, heads toward your adversaries in the right. You, what sort of hidden heart would dare take wing against us? New companion, the Muslims, the beings on her mask. Hello there, Tanifa. Tanifa's blood sister stares back at her a while before responding. What in the saint's name are you doing here with them? Doubtless come to dig your talents in my back again. No, sister, I come to have a work with you. Save it, I cannot help but show you present blood, but I shouldn't ever count you as my sister. You expect me to believe that you can you can hold this way for talk? You waste your time as ever. What is life if it's a waste of time, this sister? Give me a chance, why don't you? What do you even have to lose anymore? Besides, I've come a long way. Silence! You shall have come down here, and the time for talk is long since past. If only you could see yourself again consulting with my enemies. Find them, suffer the defeat. But I warn you, stay away from me. Mm. Amifa says nothing more as her blood sister turns away again. Mm. And that gets your attention. Oh, Listen to me, little darling. The rest of you are ill equipped to navigate this place. Let me conduct this fight on your behalf, and my wings will bring you a victory. So Dear lady, what's ring true? This night is fine, but you have not eaten him as he is the tendency among your kind. This knight will be born to use his post in the triumvirate for D. Sir Gimas refuses to participate in the raids this night too, so that Panifa can face her sister. You observe the treacherous terrain. Panifa should be better suited for the raids here than the rest of you. Now let us begin. Why would you never ask? Third time, I accept. If the two birds is going to conduct the rights for us, then I shall not. Tizo. Tizo promises to do his best against Tamifa and the Essence. Root 
Oh, yeah, you got it, sister. The choice is cast. Come then, sister. Perhaps when we are finished here, you spare a moment of your time. I shan't be tricked by you again, Tanitha. How poetic that we meet here in the downside. I can think of nowhere else where I would rather see you rot for what you did to our people and to me. Amifa seems to sense your presence and catches your attention. Hello there, little darling. If I am to be at your mercy in all this, I would like it very much if you could minimize how often I am to wallow in the state of banishment. Quickly, let me show you what we sisters of the High Women can do. Rita, you put yourself amidst a feud between two sisters? That seems entirely unwise. Even for you. Tread lightly around that exiled Tabitha. Her kind's all but forgotten Saint Triesta's grace. Sneak, darling. We hearts, we are not so bad. Now I suppose we better get to work, hmm? A strong one underestimated Tabitha over there. I trust you to the best you can. To the sky, sisters. Tell information. So was it? Tell me something, you know how to fly? This is rather proud of his ability to flutter, as a matter of fact. Then listen up! My blood sister there, she'll swoop right past you if you're careless. But we really, harps simply cannot get much out of you down here. So if she goes for any answer tricks, let's jump for it. And caught her in the act. She always hated when I used to do that to her. No true thing. To think that you have the god come sister still after everything you wrote up of us. I hate to break it to you, Tanitha, but I don't think my actions, however much they hurt you, had any effect on our familial status. Look, I know I wronged you. That's why I'm here. You don't know my side of the story. Your side of the story? If I wanted to humorize in deception, I would have asked the Commonwealth to stay in my sentence for a while. Well, if you have come all this way to face me, Panitha, then come and do it. You and me. You think that you see Panitha shake her head? Everyone, stay back. Not 
Kamatha has plunged into the fire. Tread lightly. So close. Who prevails? A rite conducted with a plum. The rite is done. Now come on, you filth. Only for the traitor's help you could have beaten us. You postpone the coming of our liberty, but you are ever patient, and our sisters on the other side shall have their way, with or without my aid. Let me help, please. Way. You found good company there, Panitha. We wither him with them. I hope sincerely we shan't ever meet again. Panitha stands motionless as her blood sister departs. Tizo is trying to let Panitha know the others are returning to the waken. Sure, I don't see why not. The eight scribes bless us with their ways. The imp Tizo appears to have a certain depth of knowledge. Tizo just had a flash of inspiration about his role in the rites, and as part of the rite means. After defeating the essence with a plum, Pryu and the others return to Uwagen to consider their next move and how best to integrate Panitha into the group. Don't worry, I won't be staying any longer than it takes. I like my air fresh so I can sleep up on the roof. I trust the rights who cause my path and Panitha to us again before long. You're welcome with us for now, Panitha. Trust is what got us here, isn't that right, Ricky? But Ruki does not seem to hear the question. He has been rather quiet since first encountering the new guest. <laughs> Panitha shoots him one of her smiles. He stammers something about having to check the wagon wheels again. He runs off during this discussion, the Mr. Pulsius aside. Reader, I ask a moment of your time outside. There is somewhere I may ask we go. Here in Black Basin, reader. By your leave, of course, and provided that the stars allow it. Would you look upon them for us, please? We look toward the heavens. Lu, the vernal star. The vernal star burns bright over the densest woods in Black Basin. The Glade of Lou, directly due west, then it is just as my client indicated. This client of yours, our informant, Sandalwood, he entrusted us with this wagon, this quest. Why? What does he want from us? You may ask him yourself. He waits us, somewhere in the waking wood, due west. How do we find him? He shall find us. It seems you are soon to finally meet Sandalwood at dawn 
We shall have to cross a single narrow path leading west, where he supposedly awaits. The approach Pami Fahu has kept to herself since rejoining your small band. You sense she is unaware of you as she prints her flight feathers, but then she speaks up before I can do the same. Come to me, come to check up on me, you girl, darling? In those first moments when we met, by the thought of confidence in me which you relied to that nice headwind boy, I'm grateful you were willing to sit past these wings. One of your kind's ancient enemies just happens to insert herself into your group and you just go with it? However, I assure you that my motives here are plain. You'll see, I have business with my blood sister Tamifa and nothing more. The booth we met, I think, she's quite fresh. As to the little quibble between us, well, it's a long story. All in all, one that's frankly no one's business but hers and mine. Surely you will run into her again, maybe not soon, but in time, and we have the rest of our long lives to wait. Anyway, happy to aid you in your quest until such time, especially to the extent that it aids me in mine. A simple exchange. Until then, stay vigilant, darling. You needn't concern yourself with making such small talk with someone like me, and besides, we have said the same lies about. She swoops away before you can respond. Funny fast moonshine, kept close at hand in the off chance of a good occasion on a very bad one. And that's it for now. Thank you. Bye bye.